Visual Pony The Narrator Reading for you since 2013 Princess Celestia, do you have a belly button? The whole story. Mrs. Flower Petal clopped her hoofs together, mostly in vain, while trying to get her class of 22 unicorns to return to their assigned seats. Playtime was over and they needed to finish their lesson before the bell rang for the day. Unsurprisingly, only one of her young students returned to her desk, though the most likely answer to that was that she never left it in the first place. Flower Petal just wasn't sure what to think about her youngest student. She was only four years old in a class of five and six year olds. She found herself once more glancing at the Phyllis cutie mark. It was unheard of at her age and yet it was there. She shook her head, watching as a young purple unicorn put down the book she was reading and glanced up at her, giving a brief smile before returning her gaze to her desk. You poor foal, the others just aren't sure how to treat you, Twilight. I suppose it is a good thing that you only come here twice a week. I dread to think what would happen if you were here more than you are, but maybe... Flower Petal's horn glowed yellow as a sheer whistle filled the room. All of the children immediately stopped their play and returned to their seats. She shook her head. If only they listened that well when I clapped my hoofs. All right, students, Flower Petal said once the fidgeting had stopped. The rest of the day was going to be set aside for us to study chapter one of our beginner's levitation textbook. However, I think we will save that lesson for next Monday. Today we're going to have a very important discussion, my little ponies. Flower Petal smiled as the small unicorns looked at her curiously. We're going to learn a new song today. Flower Petal beamed before taking out her guitar and strumming it. A unicorn has no wings on their back, but a horn on their head. They are the magic pony. The little unicorns hesitated before a blue filly beamed and opened her mouth. A unicorn has no wings on their back, but a horn on their head. They are the magic pony. The other ones finished the verse a little more quietly and Flower Petal was pleased to see that even Twilight Sparkle was mousing the lyrics. A Pegasus has wings on their back, but no horn on their head. They are the flying pony. It took far less time for her students to sing out this verse. A Pegasus has wings on their back, but no horn on their head. They are the flying pony. Flying pony. Flower Petal smiled hearing Twilight's small voice finish the verse. An Earth Pony has no wings on their back, nor a horn on their head. They are the loving pony. She strummed the guitar, the little unicorns eager to sing. An Earth Pony has no wings on their back, nor a horn on their head. They are the loving pony. Loving pony. Twilight finished, her shy voice rose the smallest amount. An Alicorn has two wings on their back and a horn on their head. They are the ruling pony. She smiled as Twilight's eyes lit up and her mouth even opened first. An Alicorn has two wings on their back and a horn on their head. They are the ruling pony. The other kindergartners stared at how eager Twilight was and she nervously slumped back down, taking her tail in her hoofs and giving it a stroke. Flower Petal sighed under her breath but smiled outwardly before finishing the song. And these are the pony friends of Equestria. Without even a moment's hesitation, the students sung out the final verse at the top of their lungs. And these are the pony friends of Equestria. All the students except one. Twilight Sparkle kept her head down and appeared to be trying to will herself away from the classroom. Flower Petal sighed. I suppose the princess may be right. Maybe it is time for Twilight to take all her classes with her. Her thoughts were interrupted as she saw a pink hoof waving madly in the air. Yes, Candy Drop? My daddy says that unicorns are the, super, the best pony. Is that why we are first in the song? Flower Petal's face stiffened before she forced the corners of her mouth upward. Of course not, Candy Drop. After all, while unicorns may have a horn, Pegasi are the only ponies with wings and Earth ponies have the greatest strength. Let's play a game, my little ponies. We've learned a song about what makes ponies different, but what do all ponies have? The fillies and colts looked at each other before a little brown colt trot. We've all got hoofs? That's right, Cinnamon. What else? Flower Petal smiled while writing hoofs on the chalkboard. Oh, we all have two eyes! A powder blue filly beamed as she bounced in her seat. 
Exactly right, Cloudy Sky. Flower Petal smiled while writing that under hoofs. After that, the answers came readily. Four legs, ears, a tail, muzzles. Finally, an orange cold grinned and screamed at the top of his voice. We've all got belly buttons! Flower Petal's magic fizzled, causing her to drop the chalk. Ah, yes, yes, Orange Seed, all ponies have belly buttons. After her suppressed statement, she reclaimed her chalk so they could continue their list. She could see they were beginning to get bored, so she brought out her guitar again. They happily sang their new song until the bell rang, signifying the end of the day. Well, that's it for the week, Flower Petal said to a room full of cheers. I'll see you all Monday morning, my students. Her eyes went to twilight as she distractedly levitated her books into her saddlebags. Except you, my dear Twilight Sparkle. Twilight, remember to stay at your desk until the Princess's Solar Guard arrives for you. A minuscule nod from Twilight was her only response. A few moments later, a white Pegasus stallion clad in golden armor arrived. Miss Sparkle, are you ready? His lips almost twitched into a smile as Twilight got up and buckled her saddlebag after catching her balance. She trotted over to the Solar Guard and looked up. Bye, Miss Flower Petal. I'll see you Monday. Flower Petal smiled. Have a wonderful weekend, Twilight Sparkle. I expect that someday I'll be hearing about all of the wonderful things you have done. Goodbye, my student. Twilight nodded and followed after the guard to her regular chariot. She sat down, staring at the floor, her ears flicking as she thought about her lessons. The guard glanced at her and frowned. Normally, his charge was a ball of energy whenever he escorted her to her lessons with the princess. He shook his head, certain the princess would be able to make Twilight happy again. Princess Celestia frowned as she realized for the third time that her faithful student had stopped taking notes. Twilight, what is it, little filly? You know you can tell me anything. She smiled in a way which she hoped was disarming. Twilight glanced up, her ears pinning back as she looked into Celestia's magenta eyes before glancing back down at the floor and scuffing her hoof. You'd think it's silly. Celestia hemmed and smiled. Twilight Sparkle, what if I told you something about myself that is very silly? Twilight said shot up as her jaw dropped the tiniest amount. You silly? But princess, you're perfect. Celestia laughed. Oh, Twilight, all ponies are silly, even me. So, what do you say? Twilight smiled and nodded. Okay. Celestia looked around to make certain that there were the only ones within hearing distance. Satisfied that it was only herself and Twilight, she sighed and swallowed. She glanced down at Twilight's large, purple, trusting eyes. This is rather silly, Twilight, so you must keep it a secret. But you know how much I adore sweets, right? Celestia barely kept herself from snorting as she saw Twilight nod, trying not to roll her eyes. Unfortunately, Twilight was still too young to control her emotions like an adult could. Celestia allowed herself a giggle. Yes, I suppose it's not exactly a secret, is it? Twilight shook her head. Uh huh. Oh, um, I mean, not really, Princess Celestia. Celestia smiled. Oh, how I adore this little pony. She is so honest. Well, there's a reason I'm still able to walk and fly rather than roll around. Twilight, I can't cook or bake. Twilight stared and then smiled. R really? Celestia blushed while smiling and placing a hoof on her chest. Cross my heart, I've tried to learn more times than I can count, but it never seems to work. After I managed to freeze a pot of boiling water last decade, I was permanently banned from the royal kitchen. Twilight couldn't take it anymore. She began giggling. Celestia winced, but then joined in until they were both laughing so hard that they were crying. Soon enough, Twilight was snuggled into Celestia's barrel. Celestia wrapped her wings around the little filly. She sighed with a gentle smile. Well, my most faithful student, I told you my silly thing and now it's your turn. Celestia parted her wings and Twilight giggled before nodding. Twilight opened her mouth then closed it. Frowning, she finally opened her mouth and blurted it out. Princess Celestia, do you have a belly button? Celestia blinked. She had been alive a very, very long time and had been asked a lot of things, but this was the first time she had been asked if she had a belly button. Well, Twilight was right. It is a silly question. 
She smiled at Twilight, hoping to get a bit more of an explanation. Um, well, Twilight continued. In class we learned a neat song about how ponies are different from each other. Then Mrs. Flower Petal had us sing about how we are all the same. Orange Seed said we all had belly buttons and I was just wondering. I mean, I know you're a pony and if you don't have one that won't change it, but um, do you? Twilight's ears slowly pinned back against her head as she babbled, her tail tucked between her legs. After a moment, Celestia chuckled and lay on the floor of the library. She rolled onto her back with her wings splayed out, revealing her slightly plump belly. Well, my faithful student, why don't you tell me? Twilight cocked her head but trotted closer and glanced down at her mentor's belly, her ears perking as she gasped in joy. You do, you do! Princess Celestia, you do have a belly button! Princess Celestia watched as Twilight bounced around. The final barrier between us has been pierced. I'm so proud of you. It didn't take long for Twilight to get worn out from her bouncing. Realizing their lesson was done for now, Celestia gathered Twilight onto her back and carried her to her room next to her own. Celestia tucked Twilight into her bed and smiled as a small purple hoof touched her nose and Twilight yawned. Celestia kissed her forehead. Have a good nap, Twilight. I'll wake you for dinner. Night, princess. Love you. Twilight mumbled. Her breathing slowed as she fell into a deep sleep. Celestia paused and smiled. And I love you too, Twilight. She glanced at the mural on Twilight's wall of the night sky, her eyes landing on the image of the mare in the moon. And I love you too, Luna. Celestia blew out the candle and trotted out of the room as she smiled, pausing for a moment before closing Twilight's door. Belly button and all. Okay, even at a short story like this, I will add my little comment time. And as always, I will remind you that, well, <laughs> I have a Patreon and, yeah, every dollar is right now really needed because, yeah, there are things happening in my life that are threatening my lifestyle and I really need money. So, yeah, Patreon link is in, this, in the description if you want to support me. Why I did this little short story is simple. I had it in my read later list for quite a while because I think it was featured once or something, I don't know. I, I really don't remember how I came across the story, but um, yeah, I had it in my read later list for a while and I thought recently, um, I, think, I think it was Sandy Kaufman who said that, uh, yeah, she would like it if I would do something else in Fallout Equestria and I have to agree, I do love Fallout Equestria, but always having this depressing stories kind of wears me down too. So I decided to change the pace a little bit. Not saying that I'm quitting for the Equestria, but this is just, well, something do I, I could do with my arm injured and stuff because there's not much editing involved and it's not very long. So, what do I think about the story? It's very nice. It's It, it shows Twilight's uh, time in the Magic Kindergarten and everything. It kind of makes me think that, yeah, it could have been like that for Twilight. Because, as we know, she has nightmares about her time in Magic Kindergarten. And uh, I was never really popular in Kindergarten myself. So, yeah, I can relate to that. At the end here that, well, Celestia, like, k kisses her goodnight and everything. I like that. Um, even though, uh, I don't know. There's this part, I mean, Twilight isn't an orphan. She has both parents. Uh, we both, uh, we all know that uh, she has lived with Celestia for a while when she was her student, but I'm not so sure that she was like right away living with Princess Celestia because, you know, would you give your child away to uh, Princess Celestia if she asked to and at young, at such a young age? Uh, not likely. At least I wouldn't. I would say, okay, she can study under you, but uh, she will live at home until she's at least 10. That's that's like my uh, spin on this. So I think she's a little too young in this story for uh, living with Celestia already. Um, and then we see that uh, Twilight is actually put into a room to take her nap that is next to Princess Celestia's own room. And there is a mur mural of the night sky. And um, you know what? I think... Twilight sleeps in Luna's room, and that's the explanation why uh, when Luna comes back, Celestia lets her stay in Ponyville so Luna can have her uh, can have her room back. Really nice, very subtle. Um, 
Yeah, and that's, uh, by the way, I apologize for the song at the beginning that I didn't sing. I don't want to torture you with my singing. So these were my thoughts on this story. I really liked it. Thumbs up. Link to the stories in the description. If you liked it, go give it a like. This author really deserves it. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony, and I will see you in my next story, chapter, or whatever I'm choosing to release.